excited about tonight's class, today's class, uh, both because of our guest and the music that we get to hear and the performers playing the pieces. So um, introducing Kyra Humphreys. She is the co-leader of the Royal Northern Symphonia. And we met at the Cleveland Institute of Music um, too many years ago. And I just have to tell you, um, we haven't seen each other since that time, which is kind of crazy um, and interesting. And we don't live, she's, you're what, in York yes. or where? Yes. Newcastle, Newcastle. So just a few hours away from each other, but we have not yet had a chance to catch up properly. So um, when you came to the Cleveland Institute, I thought you were the most chic, glamorous <laughs> violinist I had ever met. You had this this confidence and this calm about you. I'll never forget hearing you play in class um, in, in the inspiration for the really big class, which was our, our weekly studio classes in Don Weatherstein's studio. I remember you just had this like presence and calm that I always aspired to myself. I always felt like I was a wreck. Definitely didn't feel like that. So it was completely flagging on every level, I think. <laughs> Isn't that... But they were amazing. inspiring. They were great. Yeah, they were great classes, and um, and so here we are. We're here in in the UK. We've got guests, for, uh, performers uh, in London, in Pennsylvania, and in kind of in Surrey. I think is where Emily is. We're going to hear uh, the Franck Sonata. We've got some excerpts, just little ones, just Don Juan and the Mendelssohn Scherzo, and the Brahms Concerto. So I think before we lose too much time we should just get to it um our first performers are octave and i think i'm saying it correctly how is it just duffy it's like david um and they are playing the first movement of the franc sonata from their halls in uh london so here is that enjoy Thank you. 
Thank you. Gorgeous, really wonderful playing. Just give me a second to get you pinned up here. Thank you for playing and for managing, even recording in your room, as well as what we're going to play now. I'm sure when you finally get to do it, have you played it with a grand in, in a big space yet together? Um, no, not no, together, no. No, okay. So that will be such a treat when you finally get there and have that kind of all encompassing feeling in this piece. Be beautiful playing, both of you. Lots of lovely colors and, um, sounds between you. Um, I, I wonder though whether in this piece the thing that might make um, more of a difference in it is to communicate the structure a little bit more clearly um, in, in terms of the build-up because we have these rhythmic figures that repeat so often in this piece and uh, I, I think there's a sort of push and pull within the phrases that I think would give more clarity to what you want to say with the phrases. Um, and so perhaps we can just start again and see how we feel. But before you start, can I just ask you, what, what do you think the structure is in, in this piece? Mm. Uh, um, like the... Like... 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 Like A, B, A. Yeah, exactly. It's not quite sonata form, is it really? You've got the A and then you have the bit in the middle and then A comes back again, really, and then you've got a coda. So it's it's quite an unusual structure in the way that he's he's written it. And so, and I felt like that didn't quite come across in the way that you um, time everything. So if we start again and you try to feel this big, it really goes all the way from the beginning until, I don't have bar numbers actually in here, but until you get to the, the you know, when you arrive in the A major, the G sharp, after when you finally get to E major, at um, of the dee da da body, you know, with the, the first, with the one you were doing for the t sound. That's, okay. that's really, from the beginning, we go to there as one big section. So perhaps from the beginning, you can be less sure and really think all the time from the beginning that you're aiming all the way to that moment. Yeah? opening Duffy it's very hard on zoom and you're doing a great job in this situation but still I'll just communicate what I hear and you can try what you can do these four bars at the beginning we have the kind of statement and then maybe the second bar is more of a contraction so young body you ask the question young body you ask the question a little bit more and then we come back again and then there's something really special in bar five when you finally go down to that low octave, but maybe it doesn't need to be more. You've made your statement, but then it's very soft, this molto dolce, he writes. And um, Octave, maybe the, the bow distribution is quite difficult in these phrases. You know, you have da ya da di dum, but then if we have da da di it, it can stick out. The D is very strong at the moment because it's a nice ringy note on the violin. So maybe you can be more less sure in the sixth bar. And then when we get to the eighth bar, we finally get to this A major. Can it be just more relaxed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just try that one whole phrase a little bit more. For me, that 
was really so much a whole, a whole phrase now. Now, from where we go now, for, I really feel there's a kind of rhythmic pulse underneath these bars, which you could make clearer that we have, they're like a dance. So one, two, one, two, three, but then one, two, three, one, that we go all the way to the final bar. So can can you really, you know, you need to show the length of the phrase in bar, where are we? One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. The eleven bar, the eleventh bar really goes to the twelfth bar. And not so much dynamically, but that you're feeling the direction so that the pulse doesn't have to be quite as static. You know, it's really romantic. I think you can let it push forward as much as you take time in places. Okay. So let's do do the um, uh, go from the bar you come in. I'll tell okay. you. risk in pushing him forward with the third beat so one two three you're one two three so there's a kind of ebb and flow within the single bars and then when you get to the bar with the three beats in da -ya -de -da 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 -de, you just let it go a little bit for now so that you feel it even if you have to exaggerate it mm -hmm. okay. so... right. drove it more than than you needed to that time which is fine you can find a kind of more questioning at the end so for instance when you get to um after the you could take a little time there having moved for it and then we start again and now where you've got to do you have a diminuendo where you have this lovely appoggiatura where you play together you don't have that yeah oh yeah. yeah yeah because at the moment you both really it's such a gorgeous bit but you're really giving more sound there <laughs> and i think this is part of him making you wait to get to an arrival point so I think you need to really take his his marking of a diminuendo and not give so much here, yeah? So that he's, you have to wait to get to the climax. And even before that, when you have... Can that diminished chord be more special? It's, it's a surprise, you're not expecting that. So I feel like we need something more. Can you go from here? And... Even the third beat could be, you could wait a little. Two, three, and one, and two, three, and one, and then move, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
description is so much clearer now in your phrasing, really. I, I felt that has much more power there. Just one small thing, it, um, definitely in the, in the piano, when you have this, um, they, they both feel that this, it's really an appoggiatura then, but if you play, it's a little bit obvious. I know you can't quite do that on the piano anyway because they're gongs. But perhaps the first B could be less than the C sharp. And mm -hmm. then there's a lean on the B in the next bar. And then really you can move through those first bars, these um da da ya da di da and then and then really take your time. Yeah. So let's um can you go from that and made this amazing PP the um yes, yes. That one with the A-sharp bar. Oh, I've got the wrong glasses on, I'm sorry. I can't see Oh, dolce, sorry, I thought you said fortissimo. I was yes, exactly. So it's diminuendo and then it's really dolce, and this goes on for a long time. Can it be really much more still here? So we've had this very up and down phrasing in the whole of the opening, and now this for me is much more horizontal. That we, we don't have this kind of you know big phrases it's all very level and it obviously fairly impossible for you probably on that piano Daffy, there to, to get this kind of you know really soft it just needs to be you know like like a, a water running along in the left hand and then the right hand to be really independent of the left hand running along and the same when you dovetail each other to just very very horizontal can you go just where um uh you start yeah, just... just the bar before the violin comes in and really stay very soft and just flowing along here Um, Octave, I feel th these, you use an extra bow on the C sharp there, at the bottom. Oh, yeah, I'm doing the up bow. Yeah. Um, I can keep the same bow. Yeah, I think because it, it, it gives a sort of bravura feeling, which I think is not really in, in the music. It's really one long line that just passes from you to the piano in a very soft thing until we get to that bar with the C natural in it and then suddenly it has much more verticality and it's serious we get when we get that harmony so can you set up something that's really in the distance without this kind of violin -y, you know it, it doesn't need this here even though you sound gorgeous but can you just keep, keep it back so it's it, you're not so important yeah <laughs> The same thing. 
harmonies with more um, personal seriousness here really so we are flowing along and then and then okay. Rather, you know, okay and then then we flow for a bit but then we're not expecting that, you know. Yeah. And then maybe you can really take time, I think, in this for, for the, it should make you shiver all over. And, and it, it's like tell, finally telling, you know, you have a conversation maybe with a friend and you have to tell them something, but you're not quite sure that you can bring it out. <laughs> And you finally are brave here. And then the piano takes over and it's rinse for Sandra. This is suddenly so dramatic in the bars afterwards. And it shouldn't be given away. They're really very different things. So keep it really soft here. Just the, the same thing. Uh, yeah, one by one. like it said much more there and Daffy I think you could take more time as you say these you say this thing three times you've got to really mean it that third time and then we flow and we go back into that I'm just going to skip here because we're going to run out of time yeah. so then it's like the beginning again and we have the same kind of careful but with this rhythm in the piano so this next section is obviously more regular than you need to be in the opening because he's written these beats just keeping going. It's like this, uh, a pendulum or something, or, you know, a bell ringing. It's a toll that just, you have to feel that heartbeat. But I just would like to do the very end really so that you can feel how we get into this coda. And Octave, I wondered uh, uh, if you could, talk to me what you thought about your last entry. You came in with a very strong attack on your F natural. Um, your very last entry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I was thinking like, that's like the last rage of, of the wolf before uh, uh, meeting with the group. I was just feeling like that's like, anger and uh... oh, interesting okay so maybe that works for you for me it, for me it's it's more sad than it is angry but ah. i can hear your but maybe then when you go into this second last bar he's angry but there's a resignation in there isn't there when you get to the c sharp so Know, it just disappears a little bit yeah. maybe you can just try that as an idea can we go back Daffy just for your last yeah and you really... just, a bit. Oh, yeah. just a bit 
Just the end, yeah. the last four bars before F. Oh. Sorry, wherever you are. Yeah, lovely. That was really great. I wonder whether we could just go from before that so we we get into that. David, I actually meant before, you know, the end of your the solo before that. Um when you have just so that we feel because this is almost like going back to the beginning again, isn't it? But then he takes a different turn when you get the B flat again. So it's four bars. Okay, so it's like down. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I'm going to just stop you. Just this is a little thing. I'll tell when you're preparing to play. You know, Daffid is already on this this wheel of dim ba dim ba dim ba dim. So rather than a big lead, and then maybe you could just join what he gives you, because Daffid's really in charge of the timing there. Okay. Yeah. Does that make you understand? Yeah. So you just kind of come in on where he is without such a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gorgeous. That was really beautiful. And there's Cecily. Hopefully I timed that just okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Altan and Daffy. That was really lovely. And I hope that kind of gives the piece a, a bit more kind of holistic picture of how it fits together. But bravo, beautiful play. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Such beautiful playing, and thank you very much for for putting up with the the joys of Zoom, uh -huh. and Zoom with piano is always a bit of a, a you never know what you'll hear. But I think that was just extraordinary. I'm grin I was grinning from ear to ear. I think I'm not the only one who was enjoying hearing that work being done and and the back and forth and how we all miss that tremendously. Um, does anyone have any questions that they'd like to ask before we go on? We have a little bit more time in these sessions than we've had in the past. So if you'd like to ask anything, or Octav, if you have any questions, you can pop your video back on. And if not, I might ask a few. Um, um, I'm just wondering, yeah, at the very beginning, when you start the, uh, when you went into uh, the, the very beginning when you went on D, I I'm feeling like the vibrato I'm doing might not be necessarily the one I have to use. I, I'm feeling like not sure what type of vibrato I should I should use on the overall on the whole piece. Uh, I can't okay. hear. <laughs> um, we didn't get to really talk about the vibrato because th for me the structure was really fundamental and you you do do a lot of vibrato variation and it's really about choosing exactly how it goes i feel you could experiment with less in the softer sections so that it has more drama when you get to the climaxes so particularly the ends when you have no we, you don't need that there 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very slight. And, and that we hear the... There's a huge tenderness in that beginning when we come to the to the F sharp. I, think, I, I did think you did love, lovely things with your vibrato, just maybe more experimentation with less. So oh, right. sometimes don't do any, like the pain on this note. So there's variety of some of them have vibrato and some don't. So I think it, it got interrupted a bit. Oh, did it? I was talking about this passage. Yeah. And- So sometimes you have vibrato and sometimes you have none. So you really feel the pain of the the purity of the note. Okay, I'll I'll have to think about that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks very much for the opportunity. Sam, it looks like Sam has a question. You're also learning this piece, aren't you? Yeah, um, I'm just in this piece. I always think um, at the at the second page when the tune comes back, like how how can we like change the the sound here i'm always like like should it be the same or a bit quieter well i'm not really sure it's interesting sam i think as i was trying to say to them the thing that's really different in this passage is the piano playing these kind of bells like um thing so it definitely is a more moving um approach to it i think than the very first statement you have more freedom to take time in the beginning, and which is what I was trying to describe with the push and pull, that you can really move a lot in the beginning, but here it, f- it should feel like your river is just flowing perfectly on that sunny day. It's it's a lot more at ease than it is at the beginning, I think, in this passage. And, and so maybe the sound to go with it is that the vibrato is more even and less present and not present in this passage for me. Thanks. You're welcome. Nice to see you. Um, I'm going to ask you a question, which is, it's obvious to me, at least, that you have a, a deep relationship with this piece. And I wonder if you have a favorite time that you played it or anything oh, you could share. I do, actually. It's a very close piece for me. I played it when I was at university and um, I actually did it for all my kind of um, postgrad auditions. And then for things like Monster Trust, and and I had the so we well I worked on it with the same pianist, and we played it so much that we both played it from memory. It, it was just such a, a a piece that we were so at home with. So I, I actually played it in the Wigmore Hall from memory. So that was that's a kind of that is my memory of this piece. It's very um personal in fact i've not played it since it's a bit like those things that it's a very precious i've taught it lots but i've not actually played it since wow i'm glad i asked <laughs> I, I hit the jackpot there um, amazing it's I lovely think... to come back to it again today it's been a real treat listening to octav and david and really you know just getting into the spirit of the the piece again well i think we should move on and change gears and leap continents um and hear Hi. Alyssa play some excerpts for us so I met Alyssa I'm just going to tell a little bit about you I hope you don't mind uh we met at a very small liberal arts college in the middle of Pennsylvania what maybe four years ago when and you were were you doing your undergrad or your master's degree I was a freshman in college when I met you. (laughs) That's what I thought. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to misspeak. And you struck me then as a very devoted and um, bold person um, in this very quiet place. And I remember we had a a brilliant talk about um, you were just beginning your studies into performance anxiety, I believe, which you then went and did an entire, uh, if not a degree, you did a, a whole module for in school for that and developed a course, I think. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Plus, you uh, have studied violin, viola, and cello because you're a strings teacher. In the, are, are you teaching in public schools currently? I'm not. I'm just giving private lessons. To kids? Yeah, it's... I actually have two adult students who just started, but it ranges from like, it's, my youngest student is five years old, so it's a big range, but most of them are in like middle school area. Amazing. 
And you set a task for yourself, I believe, at the beginning of 2021 to learn these excerpts. So these are very much in progress. And um, I'm really proud of you for putting yourself out there to do this. So we're going to listen to the first page of Don Juan and the Mendelssohn Scherzo. And then um, Kyra will pick whatever she wants to do. So here are some orchestral excerpts. <laughs> That's great to hear those too. They're such classic excerpts, aren't they? And you're obviously on, on the way at getting to know them, um, as well as those of us who've been dealing with them for a lot, a long time. have had lots of revisits to these, and it's always great coming back to them and discovering more things. So tell me, in your approach to Don Juan, Alyssa, what are you wanting? I know it's got lots of technical challenges, but as the big headline, we need to have a kind of musical motivation mm -hmm. to make this piece come alive. So can you tell me what you're kind of imagining as you're trying to get to the place of playing it in that way? So I, am, or I hear it as just this very confident, very bold um, piece, especially like in the introduction, but then kind of as you go through it more, as we start to get into the like when the little quiet parts here and there, uh, it kind of instills a sense of doubt almost in the original really strong boldness. So he has some insecurities in there somewhere. Yeah. Great. Okay, so to communicate that kind of real bravura at the beginning, we have to really, everything is in that the way we approach with the bow. Yeah, how to make this thing really exciting uh, rather than too even and dogged. So I think if you can think in gestures straight away, even if it's a bit slower, it's still in this kind of, you know, just wild moment in that gesture. So can you just play me just the first bar and see if you can really feel like, you know, this ridiculous man who comes in and swaggers and thinks he's so marvellous. Can you just do that? <laughs> Wonderful, that was two bars. So straight away, if you're starting on a down bow and we've got this minim on the up bow at the end, yeah, of the first bar. So, and we really need to go, yeah, 
it's got to be really strong. So how much bow do you think you're going to want, need, want for that minimum? Well, I want to use, start off with very little bow just because the, um, for clarity and string crossings. But once I hit the half note, I could probably give it more bow. Or yeah. So bow. in order that you've got a bit more for that, could you just try starting a bit higher up the bow and really just... <laughs> So uh, uh, it's challenging that for me, the fingering you're doing because you have to shift just before you get to the half note. And really it's the direction is going right there. But So we don't really want any weight before you get to that note. Okay. So to, to st play this in third position, we've got just more chance of kind of sizzle. Okay as you get there but i wouldn't change your fingering now unless you want to but just can you really aim to really arrive on that half note just without it can you just play that by itself so we really just the half note great can you add a bit more sizzle in your vibrato yeah really go on go. yeah super and now just can you play or the with the note before in first position just one note Okay. Okay, and now great. Can you do now two notes? Up bow. <laughs> Super, that's great, Alyssa. Can you be challenge yourself a little bit more to be a bit nearer the bridge? So you're so you're gonna make a bit more sound. Great, and now three notes. So you're going to have to shift a bit faster to get to the E. I'll try the third position. Okay, bit. go for it. Super. So yeah, if you want to, that, that worked really well. If you wanted to practice this, how can you um, break it up so that you're practicing the left hand and the bowing separately? I could probably... You mean like bowing on open strings? That's the one. Yeah. And then left hand. One of my all time favorite practice methods. So it's really quite simple if you do my fingering that I suggest it's just. Can you just try that? I have to calculate. Do it slowly, do it slowly. Fast. G string note. Yeah. So it's five on the G, two on the D, and one on the A. That's it. Super. Excellent. So actually for the bowing, you can really do that quickly now. Yeah? Yeah, so, it feels a lot easier. Super. Okay, let's go on from bar one now. So then having done this, I suggest that you cross to the E string straight away here because is not nearly so strong sounding as you can really grab that sound on the E string. Yeah. So um, you can stay in first or we shift up to third position. And so that gives you a better vibrato on the B. So having started a bit up here in the bow, then you can really grab that. Can we just hear the second bar? Yeah. Oh, so I did another up bow. I, I didn't tell you that, did I? So you no. got the here and then so oh, okay. you got the F sharp on another up bow. Great. And you need a really exciting bow stroke um, when you get to any long notes so, rather than not so even. 
can it be just to have a real gesture on that stroke? Yeah. Super, well done Alyssa, that's great. Yeah, and then, because it's all about planning with your bow, this excerpt, to get the most exciting sounds, you really have to have thought exactly what you want to do with the bow. So then, you can lift it, and Are that you has a, real... a double up bow there too. Yes. So... Because you want the rhythm to be quite clipped because it's so full of energy. Right. Yeah? Great, and then I would do a down bow on the triplet, and then this crescendo here needs to be a real swagger, both with your bow and your vibrato. Can you just play that note by itself? Just the G sharp. Great, can you speed up your vibrato as you go? Yes, yeah, super, Alyssa. That's that has much more drama already about what you're playing, yeah? It's more exciting. And now, can you go, let's go on. Can you play the next bar? Okay, so it's the same thing here, Alyssa. If you, if I sang to you, really, ba da 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 you'd say you sound like you're walking and you're just in your own little world. But this is Don Juan. He's saying, look at me all the time. I just want you to, you know, I'm so marvellous. I need to be the centre of attention. So can you be a bit more like that? And you're just a yeah. So you, I've actually done a bit too much metronome practice on this one. Oh, okay. So it's, but it's really within the, the tempo. It's more about your bow speed. I think in general, you, you've got a lovely clean sound. That's great. But I think you could experiment more with uh, varying your bow speeds within a slur, not just according to the value of the note, but within a pattern of notes. So this phrase rather than do you see the difference so you really yeah. speak at the beginning and then we can crescendo through the second one yeah so really just you know throw the bow at the end have a go yep, right that's, out of that's the idea have another go Great. And you were really using all your bow there as well, which was much better. So you're, you're not wasting any. Let's do it one more time. Can you exaggerate it? So it's really, let's do it slowly. Yeah, but that's the idea. And now, Alyssa, can you try to have a little background vibrato, even on the little notes? in this bar at the moment I hear and it's a really good clean attack but I wonder if you could experiment with more of a thrown bow here so it's a rather than not from the string usually we spend all our time telling everybody to start from the string but this is one where you can try the other okay Super, that's the idea. And then it just needs to obviously get faster as you get more at home with it. Fantastic. Um, and then we've got the two notes and just be careful that the first one is long and the next one is short. Yeah, but let's go on to the tune now. Can you play the next? really 
about the bow speed being a little bit more varied within a note so that you're always thinking what what's the shape that I'm trying to make rather than have I evenly distributed you know it's great to have a really clear subdivision of your bow that you can play with an even stroke but very often that isn't what we need and you just have to decide where are we so this very beginning it's not but so each of these has a real impulse on the beginning of the note. We're always bouncing on each of these notes, yeah? Because it's very heroic rather than um, pedantic, yeah? So just immediately just have another go at the first three bars and each of these long dotted half notes, um, try to give them more direction. when you get to your dotted rhythms that they don't lose energy right yeah that they're, they're, they're not so strict but that you know it's a dotted quaver or sorry dotted uh, eighth and and a sixteenth but that's not really the gesture it's ya -da -dum. right yeah? so can you just play that one without thinking too much just swagger Super. So I know you've been working really hard at this excerpt, which we really do have to do. But in your approach, perhaps you could have always as your headline, what do I want musically? And then even when you're practicing slowly and carefully, you're doing everything that you need to do that you would do when you play fast. Because there's sometimes there's a danger in practicing things too much slowly and you need to see what happens when I go fast and then how do I slow that down to my slow practice. So you have to know what you want when you're playing quickly and practice a slow version of that rather than just starting with the slow tempo. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So that you've thought more about what you need afterwards. So after we've got this with um, I, I, can I just recommend another fingering as well, just for reference, and then you can try once. Um, if you put a one on the G sharp, and then do another one on the A, so that you're on a two on the B, it's just fewer shifts, and then you stay on the two, and you do two, three, three. So your second finger is really anchored on the B, And then you just shift down for everyone that shift is nasty and you know one misses it and one gets it you know and you just have to keep on doing really planning it and i have different ways of approaching that shift what fingering have you been doing for for now what so thing? i've been doing starting at the b oh, let me find it one two three and then i'm going down to a two okay so how far is that shift then? Uh, I don't know how you'd like me to measure this. <laughs> well, in um, what level, how far, how far does your hand have to move? I feel like my hand itself isn't moving so much, mostly my wrist is. Yeah, but, but if you think in terms of intervals, at the moment, your one is on the B. Right. Yeah. And what note will your one be going to? It'd be going to an E. Right. So it's a perfect fifth shift. Um, and so if uh, one way to practice this is to practice it on different notes all the way up the violin. So you can practice it a semitone lower, a tone lower, a tone and a half lower, and a semitone higher, a tone higher. And it just means you have a kind of more intimate knowledge of what that shift is. But I do recommend you try the fingering that I suggested because then you have less far to go. 
Yeah. Slightly small. And your hand is really in a very uncomfortable position once you've got your first finger up there rather than... Because, in fact, if your two is on the B, your one is probably quite comfortably on a G sharp rather than an A. You know, this is like a diminished hand position. And so then you've only got a major third to shift, which is a lot okay. less, yeah, from your hand point of view. Um, let's play that whole phrase again, shall we? And just see, can you really let rip, Alyssa? Don't worry about missing your shifts now. Can you just show me the kind of mood that you're trying to get? And maybe it'll come off and maybe the shifts won't, but we might get the spirit of Don Juan anyway. <laughs> speed I, I would yeah. really just really think about how you can do that and maybe some different exercises that you can do to kind of you know how um if you pulse the note within a note so it rather than but, and then you can feel really how much bow are you using on each one of those pulses and it, it really makes the sound bloom a little bit differently can you just try that once to play eighth notes within the note almost like um, a hook that's it and now not so evenly so you've got because the first one is more isn't it so you're really using like a third of your bow on the first one That's the idea, yeah? That's good. So they're just different ways of thinking about the ring in your sound so that it's always alive and living rather than just even. And this thing about throwing the bow as well, when you... Can you try it, this throwing on the low B as well? So rather than... It's just a little bit earnest, the from the string, whereas... You know, it has a bit more joie de vivre. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's super. And then again, just a little fingering thing there. You could just do an extension back to that G sharp so that it doesn't delay you because... That's it. Yeah. And then now when we get to these triplets, they can be much less of a big deal. You know, we don't want to hear. But just... And then suddenly you have to get really exciting at the end. Yeah? Um, do you do a down bow when you get to your... Or did you do that on and up? Um, wait, where is at the, the G? Yeah. I start that on up bow. And then okay. I go double. So again, um, we haven't really talked about left hand positions there. I do this in second position. Because okay. I really want to go. I like that kind of pulse on that vibrato there. But of course, in theory, one should have that on your fourth finger as well. So but you have to really have a lot of strength in there to, to be prepared for that. And again, these dotted rhythms, just a little bit more exciting in the dot. So, rather than da da dum, just da ya dum, da da dum. Can you just say that for me once? Can you say da da dum? Da da dum. That's it, great. Can you play one then? Can you play for me? Yeah. 
great. So um, even to look at it a little bit further, rather than, can you have, so there's a, the speed is at the beginning of the F sharp, and then there's a slow, almost like a wait before we go for it again on the C. Yes, Alistair. That's so much more exciting as a bow stroke. I, I know, yeah, I don't know. You just have to remember. Okay, so let's move on. I don't know, hopefully Cecily will come in when I've um, had my uh, time, but um, this is rather like the first bar of triplets at the beginning. It's not all even. Yeah, so can you just try it on the string once, but with more shape? So, so we really hear a shape. Great, but there's a crescendo at the end, isn't there? So we have to yeah. really not give up in the sound at the end. So it, let's say start strong. And then the top bit's not so important, and it's the opposite of what you might expect. You don't need to crescendo up to the top, because you really need to crescendo down to the bottom. Great, that's good. So, Alyssa, I wonder whether we could just um, do something slightly different from here for a minute. Can you do, can you play just some quarter notes and try to pulse both your bow and your left hand at the same time. Yeah, it's coming. I think that would be a good thing for you to, to practice in your vibrato. I don't know what vibrato exercises you do, but um, even on one note, you could do the... Um, I feel like it, it needs to get have a kind of impulse at the beginning of mm -hmm. what you're playing, yeah? Um, so let's, we'll skip on a little bit because there are so many different bits to cover in here. Yeah. Um, these, again, this is now we need to be able to ping from the string when you're already playing. So it's like ac accented detaché. Can you go from here? as you do it otherwise it just becomes very strict and not exciting so can you go from where the, the separate triplets start and really plan your bowing very good Alyssa that is so much more shape already yeah and then um, how do you go about getting faster for all this stuff? Well, I've, that's what I've mostly been doing lately was just gradually getting it up with the metronome. And that's probably why I've been playing so strict. I haven't really experimented yeah. a whole lot yet. Um, but well, I started out, I would do the like different rhythms to practice the notes, sometimes like an add a note method. Yeah, that's great. It's good to find out where in, in a run of notes the, the tricky bit is that slows you down. And that's the great thing about rhythm practice. That works really well. Um, so now if we go on to this, um, we have to create suddenly, like you say, was, was, is it doubt or is it sudden tenderness that, you know, because he's, he's Don Juan. So as well as being bravura, he can probably be 
you know, full of sweet nothings in his in his moment. So you have to show that side as well, the kind of... Um, and I like that you were really brave doing it up there, but I wonder whether you can use a more floaty bow for that so you get a completely different colour. Can you try this? With more bow. Good, that's lovely. And then remember the last... Maybe a little vibrato on your last note. Super, that's lovely. Um, can you just do for me just some really fast light bows over the fingerboard a little? Right to the frog, right to the frog. They still haven't done me the whole bow, really the whole bow from the frog to the tip. Okay, and now in, as a different thing, can you do it with an even bow speed now? But now faster. Good, that's coming. Can it be lighter and with that kind of soft, whooshy sound? So again, on the side of your hair, I want you to really listen for the ring around the note, not the note itself. That's it. That's a really different colour there, yeah? So you want to use that sometimes in these soft bits to show when he writes um, the second one, it, 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 Flebile. You know, there's a kind of flexibility in that sound that you need to capture there. And then there's the bit like the beginning, and now we've got these really nasty little, um, sorry. I haven't practiced it. Um, how, d how do you do that? Fingering wise or? Yeah. Fingering wise, I have, so I start the G sharp on a two, a second finger. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, so that's one of two. The other one is to actually lift all the... Um, I like that fingering, but it can be difficult because you've got to keep your second finger down. Mm -hmm. And it's quite crowded up there. So um, the other fingering is that once you've got the two there, your one is already in place yeah, on an F sharp as well. So then you can lift the two and do 3-3 three, three instead. Oh, okay. And I have to say that I find that it, that one works better because your fingers aren't in the way so much. But it, it, they're both okay, but... Okay, yes, yeah, you, you understand, yeah? And then, so... And then it's the same, the next one... Um, the next one has a different pattern, so you don't need to move the finger out of the way. Um, so that that works there but and these just need to be very very light um can you just do me the stroke on one note let's just look at the stroke that's lovely Alyssa that's really good um I have one last little thing that I've noticed that I wanted to mention when you are on your top notes I noticed that even up here you're very upright with your finger, your left hand shape. Mm -hmm. And I think if you experiment with a slightly flatter finger up higher, you'll get a warmer sound up there. And, and it also means that your hand doesn't have to be quite so far up. <laughs> yeah, you can be pulled further back with your hand position. And Cecil has come to tell me that we need to stop. <laughs> Alyssa, that was a real pleasure to share that with you. Bravo with your work and I hope you enjoy getting to know it even more and getting yeah, your skills. I have lots to experiment with now. I'm excited. Great. Okay. Bravo. Well. And I let you run because I'm looking at who is, is logged into this Zoom meeting and I know that 85% of these people are working on this very same thing. <laughs> so I... It's thank you so much, Alyssa, for for bringing it and for being game to to try. And your intonation is impeccable. And I know you're playing a new violin, right? Yeah, yeah. I got this one this summer. It's 
finally uh, one I can grow with. And that's that's so exciting. You you've got no, nowhere to go but up. So well done. I'm there. There are messages coming and saying yes. We're all practicing this. So um, so great. Um, I have a couple of questions before we go on to Emily. Just to follow up a few things. And and Alyssa, you can chill. You're you're off the hook. Um, I'm sorry we didn't get to the Mendelssohn, but but yeah, well done. Sorry, we didn't really. There was just so much in Don Juan. You were right. Oh, yeah. That was the one. To we spent hours on this piece. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a couple of follow up questions to some things that you suggested she practice because I think it's really fantastic. Um, the idea of shift of practicing your shift not just in the place that you're playing it, but practicing the same interval elsewhere do you find that do you do that all the way up and down the string or I, I do find it a really helpful it's especially good for difficult intervals I think that um it helps you with pitching in difficult passages so if it's you know there are some contemporary pieces with really difficult sequential intervals and if you've practiced that at any pitch um, you just, I feel like one knows it more int intimately. It's surprising sometimes how difficult it is to do it at a random other pitch. We become very attached to the actual notes we're playing <laughs> rather than the relationship between them. So I, I use it a lot in all sorts of different things and I do think it's a really helpful way. But, and sometimes if the stretches are, are big, um, it can be good to go higher up where they're smaller and sometimes it's helpful to go further down where they're bigger and you have to, you know, then it makes the other one easier. It's just like rhythm practice. It's one of those things that when you come back to the actual thing you have to play, it's easier than all the other things you've just practiced. I'm looking forward to trying that. I, I have a, a contemporary piece I'm learning and I know that's going to be a great tool for that. The other thing I wanted to ask you about, I find one of the most difficult things to do, you know, when we practice our bow speed, we spend so much time on on the bow change and how to make a smooth bow change. And often that involves slowing the bow down at the turnaround and then speeding it up at once you get moving again. Yet so much of the time what we need is a fast bow speed at the start of a stroke. Yeah. So I wonder, I you sh kind of showed two ways to do that. One was with the pulsing and the other was with sort of the, when you had Alyssa do the impulse of the vibrato and the bow at the same time. I wonder if there's any other suggestions you'd have for that. Um, I mean, uh, I think I like to practice scales with all kinds of different bow speeds. So I don't know if you remember Cecily Wallerstein had us practice a lot this kind of um, so this kind of powered, um, you know, accented uh, detaché. Um, both with a stop and then actually carrying on legato. And I find that just hearing those kind of pulses in scales is good, as well as obviously all this, you know, practicing with articulation. But for, for speed things, I think a lot of it is just thinking, what do you want musically? And then making your bow do what you yeah. want it to do. You, you've got to have that bit first, you know, <laughs> motivation. Right. Fantastic. And then kind of demanding that you do it, not just... Yeah. I, I, and, and I guess all, all those kind of uh, speed pressure exercises. So uh, I do a thing with speed where you do... And then... So, and you can go up to multiple numbers. So it's always controlling, you know, different var variables, I guess. And then the same with pressure. So a kind of. Just various kind of. So they're all in actually in, I should credit Simon Fisher with this. They're all in the basics book. Yeah. So that's, um, they're good ones to do in there. I think they're also condensed in the warm-up book. If you don't want to read the 200 pages, you can read. Okay, I well, don't have that one. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, let let's um thank Alyssa, and um I know you put you even had to change your schedule to do this today. So thank you very much for being here, and we'll move on to some Brahms. So this is Emily Blaney playing just the exposition of just I say it just the exposition of the Brahms Violin Concerto right. first moment.
can't see you. Where are you? <laughs> ah, Emily, where have you gone? I'm You're here. Not available on my scroll. Hold on. She's there. Oh, there you are. I got you. <laughs> okay. Uh, great. Um, lovely. Bravo. Well done, Emily. It's such a tour de force, even just to play the um, exposition in that. And there were so many really lovely things. You know, you really, it's well organized and um, it's got some really strong power behind it, which is terrific. I can see, you know, there's huge energy and this piece you really does need it, doesn't it? It's so full of intensity and that's super. And now, how long have you been playing this piece? Um, a few months, I think. Okay. Um, so, and how, how are you feeling with the kind of, yeah, I could just play that while I'm telling somebody what I've had for breakfast today. Oh, definitely not. No. <laughs> okay. So, um, because uh, it, it's it's an interesting stage, isn't it? This process, you, you we work so hard and we're super concentrated and we think of all the different ways we can practice a passage. And, you know, you've done it now. You really can play, the, you've just played the exposition to the Brahms Concerto. You can do it. So I wonder whether it could benefit now from coming back a little bit from the trying very hard and, you know, being able to have a distant view as well as a close up view while you're playing and whether you can maybe, I mean, it, it's an exaggeration, I suppose, but I'm, I'm wanting you to find, to go back and find more beauty in all the things that are very difficult rather than the great challenge of playing the Brahms concerto. So if you imagine it wasn't a challenge at all and it was you were just playing open strings and how you might approach that in both mentally and physically and to find some halfway between what you're doing and that kind of effortlessness that you would have if you were doing something really simple. Um, when when I remember playing this with with orchestra the, fir the first time and I had this sense in the performance that I was climbing Everest and it was the most amazing feeling and I just didn't want it to end. I, I was just like, I, I just, this is such an amazing moment to have arrived at to do this with orchestra and I want it to go on that Everest feeling. But you know, and you have to keep your concentration all the way up and down the mountain. But at the same time, you have to remember to look at the view and and really appreciate every bit that you're doing. So can we let's go back to the beginning and see if you can. I, I just want I don't want you to lose any of the power, but I want you to feel that you're loving and nurturing every bit as well. So let's start from go from the beginning and let's see. Great, super lovely, Emily. I'm going to stop you straight away. Um, so, uh, the other thing in this piece, it, it, it is very much an orchestra. We've got everything that happens in the orchestra, and a lot, particularly this first page, is just all noodling around while actually the melody is still in the orchestral part. But the second bar, yum, bomb, dum. This third beat is so epic. So it's not yum, bomb, bomb, but yum, bomb, but um. So can you start from the beginning? And instead of thinking that you're arriving at the first beat of the second bar, that you're going to the third beat, he does this much later on. You know, five beat bars are really very important. When you get to the ya da di ya da, it's five beats. He's doing this all the time in this piece. That it's not three, it's five. So just go from the beginning, and um. Yeah, aim for that third beat in the second bar. Okay, and now can you do it without... Um, we still have to have the care. So you don't want a real... a really big ping, but we need clarity. Can you just go from... and give me more on the third beat that way?
Yeah. Are you, how are you aiming to approach the articulation on the second beat? Does it have a clear beginning? Is it from the string? Um, I'm not really sure. I'll try again. <laughs> Yeah, I did it from the string that time. It felt yeah. Like. Can you do it from the string, but maybe not so much attack? So it's clean, but not too forceful. Great. And now we need... Can the left hand be responsive so that you're loving the end of the note as much as the beginning? For me, that was much more a lovely sound in the first two and then you have to keep that one going don't we to go into the next bar so say just same thing from the second bar and really really love the end of the note with your left hand great that's fantastic and now can you really die? So it's not but a kind of inevitable arrival in the second bar. Super, Emily. That for me, that had much more direction. I don't know how it felt to you, but now I didn't get the vibrato on those first two beats in the second bar. Great, that's much more lovely than just the power, yeah? So we need the power and the beauty, which I really felt you got that time. So let's go on now from the B flat, go on and uh, um, be careful on these triplet quavers that they're not just strong. Always keep the inside of the sound as well as the beginning, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Good, that's coming. Can you do it slowly for me and give me vibrato on every single short note? Right, so of course it's going to go too fast really for you to be able to do that, but there's something about background vitality in your left hand that means it's kind of living rather than just tight in the left hand does that make sense so can you play now from the b flat again and try to keep that vitality in your left hand as you play all the short notes good doesn't matter about the last don't worry um now can can we have more direction in that third bar that they're not all exactly even but I missed clarity now Emily on these can you I think they all need a beginning right now can you do for me just a longer note so we have beginning but then we have sizzle afterwards that's it and now it just has to be shorter Yeah, and now just a quaver. Yeah, it's interesting. Now it sounds too clipped. Yeah, I've got... But can you keep your left hand as if you were playing legato? Play it once, completely legato. Right, and now just make the bow shorter, but the left hand the same. Excellent. I really like that. I think that really has um, much more bloom in the sound. Okay, can we go from the second phrase now? And just keep thinking direction when you have these chords that we're really aiming yum by yum to the A. Yeah, it's one long line, this whole phrase. really 
come in. Can I ask you, um, it, it requires a lot of strength, this piece, doesn't it? And I, I'm feeling that you could probably help the strength in here by developing it away from the piece. What, what exercises do you do for kind of left hand strength? Um, I've done some Shradiac in the past, um, scales. <laughs> okay, so Shradiac is good and it's, it's very good for, that's good for dropping and lifting. Mm. Um, but there are lots of other bits, there's horizontal movement and a crossing your string and the vibrato pulse, which is what I feel when you play with strength, you're missing your vibrato. So it, even on that first bar, I want to have the clarity of articulation in the bow, but no loss of, of real left hand. So if you were to practice octaves, really trying to develop that left hand strength to be able to do that. So there's loads of do -ness, which is what I would recommend. I don't, have you done some of the do -ness stuff before? No, never. Okay, um, I mean, it's torture but it's full of amazing stuff. And as long as you do it really carefully, you know, 10 minutes at a time, not lots where you can, no, I mean, I got doing this first with Wallerstein, so Cecily will probably have particular bits. She probably did it with him, but I find that it's really good for that left-hand strength. But can you just, I, I don't want to leave this because I think it will really help um, both beauty and sort of, um, intelligibility in your playing if you can develop this that it doesn't just sound linear that there'll be more depth can you just play the the bar with the the f octave and really i want clarity at the beginning so do it under tempo and real vibrato pulsing on the beginnings of these <laughs> Your, your wood is down to the hair before you begin. Yeah, nearly. Can you look at look at your wood in the middle of the bow? Can you see, is it, it should be directly, oh, that's it, that's super, great. Really? Yeah, and then it's, so it's like martelé basically. Yeah, and now, can you give it that left hand impulse at the same time? Yeah, and then we don't want it's not all the way to the end. It's got fast slow in the bow stroke. Yeah, so it's it's actually not that dissimilar to what I did on the Don Juan. Weirdly, I wasn't expecting that, but it, it, there is a similarity. Super, that was very good, Emily. Again. on them so we need this change in bow speed to make otherwise it's not a musical body can you say it for me da, 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 da. yeah so do you hear you don't go da da but da da you naturally have a decay in your voice and that's what we need in the bow stroke okay. yeah it's coming it's uh can you just do it on one note? Because what I hear is it feels a bit um, horizontal. Can you make more of a kind of banana shape in it? Yes, exactly. Super. That's great. So the, the bar like that. Oops. That's great. Can you hear the, the direction it's going in? Yeah. yeah, it's coming. Okay, and now when we have these. All, all of these need some kind of. Can you play it for me, Legato? They need love in all these journeys. Yeah. 
Okay, Millie, uh, Emily, can you start with both your fingers on the string? That's it. So, so it's it's fewer movements than you're making if you've got both those notes down already. And then when you put the the F sharp, try and put the F sharp and the D sharp almost down together. Gives you much more chance to have a vibrato feeling in there when the fingers are down together. Yeah. Okay, good. Let's let's go on now so that we can co cover a bit more ground. Can you go from the arrival, from the A, and really give me vibrato and love, just love this bit. All of Brahms is full of love. Yeah, so how, how do you, it started off very well. The string crossings are much easier at the beginning, aren't they? And then they get harder. Have you practiced it on open strings? If I have, it was a long time ago. Yeah. Okay. Because um, I feel like that would really benefit also expressively. It's not just for the technical thing, but... So you're really feeling that in the bow. Can you just do it once? the difficult one you have to do an extra one on the a string yeah when you get down to we need to hear those uh, a little bit more so really don't be afraid of the can you see i'm really in the string that you're really loving that that um arc feeling that's it. Emily, can you try, I wonder whether the sound would have that kind of a little bit more give in it if, if, your little thing, if your fingers were a bit closer to your bow, so rather than being this way that you're, you're kind of more over the bow and then, yeah, exactly. Can you try that with the pitches now? So yeah. On. Okay, yes, can you go on for a bit? Yeah. really good um just as a little thing in here i think sometimes you could prepare your left hand fingers a bit sooner that that they're not up in the air so that they're really close to the string but when you finally get to here can you feel a smile come out of this we've had all this tension diminished chord always not very comfortable and then it's it's really it's not the sun yet which comes when we get to you know data but it's a little smile yeah just go directly on it and really gentle with the sound vibrato it should be sweet suddenly you know there's really mm. yeah exactly I mean I guess that's why people do that fingering in the bar before it makes it it's less far to go 
but um, you know, you can do it with the fingering you're doing. You just have to shift a bit further. Go on, go on now. Yeah, that was beautiful. Really lovely, Emily. So here we just again, you have to be so careful here that it doesn't just sound like lots of triplets in a row. What's going on in the orchestra here? I think they've got a long sustained chord, is that right? Um, well, oh, when you get to the triplets, well, it, there's it's a melody. There's always this kind of, when you start, it's... And then the bassoon has the melody and then the cellos have the melody. You know, it's going on all the time, this da, ya, da, da. And it only stops with the chord when you get to. And then you can be free. That's the long chord. Okay. Yeah. So before that, can you just keep the direction going, but really love it all the time, that it's not just. But... Each one has a slightly different colour and a curve up and down that is related to your bow speed. That it's not just nine even notes in a row. Yeah, try to feel each fall. So... I'm exaggerating, but something that's a contour as you play those. So if you go from here... I think I'm just running out of bow. Maybe I, yeah, I, I must say I do an extra bow there. Yeah. So. I mean, there are lots of different ways. You're right. Just be free for now. If you want to take more, do. such a beautiful and special part I think of this piece with the each one is like I'm getting closer it's not just oh I'm going you have to really love those changes you know especially when you get the the chromatic ones and now here yeah. A relief. Can you kind of oh, when you get to the A? There's some amazing moment there, and I, I at the moment you slow down a lot on the semi quavers, and for me it lessens the fact that we then go into the quavers. So, so the rhythm is clearer, I think. Yeah. Let's go from the D sharp, can you? And really feel the... I'd love to hear more background vibrato from your left hand. Okay. Which is the most important note in that scale, the first one? Which one do you want to love the most? There's something there that's really nice. It is, yeah. They, I mean, there are there are lots, but in the end, where do you need your bow? Where are you arriving? I suppose the last note. Yeah. yeah. And you've got like this much left when you get there. Can you just save it? And also, I mean, you've chosen to play it on the E, which is maybe not the loveliest. It's quite open. Mm. For me. Okay. Um, but I mean it doesn't have to but you certainly need a bit more bow to love it whenever you get there yeah ah. 
you, you started up bow, Emily. I think you're on an up bow when you start the D sharp. Oh. You just save your bow like mad. That's the idea. But do, do we go all the way to the G or is it a resolution of some kind? It needs bow, but it's not. Maybe. That was really beautiful in that melody. Just um, timing wise, he's really clear. So don't wait. I think he makes these pillars really clear and then there's movement to the next one. And then it's so beautiful at the end. That's a calm moment, isn't it? That you can, and then we've again. He puts these big. Just don't wait, but keep it really lovely, rather than trying hard. Hmm. Yeah. Can you just go from again? Just the end of that. I'm sorry to stop you. We're going to run out of time. Just on these, can you vibrate your resolutions as well as your before notes? Great. So now, having said that, of course, I don't really intend for you necessarily to vibrate every note. I just didn't want there always to be the pattern of the note before has it and the note after doesn't. So it's just about really colouring each note. Before we start, I just wanted to do one other bit, which is from here. Just about the smoothness of your bow. Can we just go from there and really hear what's the melody actually? Can you just play the melody without the in-between notes? Gorgeous. Okay, so that's what it needs to sound like, basically. And don't you all the in between notes can just be much less of a fuss. Good. What gone? To, what do you notice? It um that I, my bow speed is not continue. Isn't it's not continuous, but it like actually sometimes okay and and do you know there's a something else that's getting in the way of your bow speed being lovely which is not your bow is it vibrato again no i don't th i don't think it is i i think it's left hand preparation okay i, I feel like then they're, they're not ahead of where you are because your left hand needs to lead everything really you know your bow can only play where your left hand is already and uh, Perhaps if you just, which is where the vibrato comes in, I feel for me, it's not really about the actual vibrato. It's about you feeling like your left hand is really alive and leading what you want to say. So just go from the tune again. And they should all basically be there. It's all in one position. Yeah. Much better, but Emily, did you feel that your second finger was really late on the A? And it just disturbs your beautiful line, but that was already much better. You were more even with your bow as well. 
when you cross the string, yeah? When you have to do... You don't want to have it hanging around in the air. Yeah. But it goes down straight away. Yep. <laughs> That's the idea though. Can you feel there's something much yeah. more, it's like stroking someone's head on your violin. You want to feel there's just, it's very, it's all very smooth and velvety with your left hand. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And that gives you that silkiness of the melody. Just have one more go. That's the idea, yeah. I think it's, it feels a little bit harder, but really it gives a lot more continuity and silkiness to your melody. That's super. And the same, all this really applies to all the triplet passage further down, yeah? It's the same idea, bringing the melody out and keeping the bow very smooth and left hand prepared. And there's Cecily. Oh, I didn't get as far in that as I wanted to, but no, there's always so much to do. Bravo, Emily. It's really sounding very good. And I think it's just you need to take it the next step now by feeling really more at home in it. I, I recommend you playing it um, and trying to talk to somebody else while you're playing it or boogie around the room, you know, all these things that so that it becomes part of your unconscious or your subconscious as well as your very consciously concentrated. Yeah, because that's how you need to make it feel easy. And so it needs to become part of like driving a car, you know, so you don't have to be. And then you have the freedom of concentrating on exactly what you want when you play it rather than the mechanics of making it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Bravo. Really good. Thank you. Fantastic playing, fantastic teaching. Thank you so much for all of that. Um, I wonder if we have any questions before we're completely at the two hour mark. Not that we're, we're not going to be kicked out of the room here, but um, I don't want to impose too much on Kyra's time. So does anyone have any questions? I do have a question. Um, since we're on the subject of concertos, um, what's your favorite one? Oh, well, I, I think I don't know that I have a real faith. I think the Mendelssohn is the most perfect um, concerto for me, but um, uh, they all just have have different things. It's like when you're wanting to get to get into them, you know, Mozart is probably where my heart is. So in a way, but probably in the piano concertos, not in the violin concertos, I, I play Mozart and Beethoven piano concertos forever in orchestra. I could always, you know, d die to play them. But um, I, I, my latest thing is that I want to learn Walton. I've never played the Walton. So that's um, great. Next mission. I look, for, I look forward to that. <laughs> I'll look for you on, on when we're back on stages. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, one more question and then let's call it an evening. Anyone? Thank you. One? Thanks, Ross. All right. I think I've silenced the crowd. I'm so sorry to, to cut it off, but I think my dogs are going to jump through the windows soon if I don't go let them out. And I can only say thank you very much for your time and your, your energy and your um, your everything it, and it's wonderful to hear you again oh, after thanks so much thanks for all that lovely playing everybody bravo and um thanks um cecily for all that you do to make these classes happen it's really so great oh it's a pleasure um next week we have ruth rogers uh who is the leader of the london mozart players and we have um performers from let's see the uk i have a uh, actually is leo still on he is a, a friend from brazil is going to play for us um, I'm keeping these going as long as we're in lockdown because why not? And I'm really trying to bring in uh, my guest teachers, people I know who would normally be crazily touring the world with their with their orchestras and their chamber groups and and who have been grounded. So I'm so happy to be able to bring this um, to Zoom. And with that, I think we'll end the live stream. Thank you very much, everyone, and see you next week. Oh, Cecily. Yes. Can you just? I just want to reply to one one person's oh. person who's written to me a question. So can you just leave 
leave it open just for a second even if absolutely it's... sorry about that thank you oh well i guess i could say shall i say it to everyone because there's a she posted to me direct but i'll yeah it was what advice would you give to yourself age 10 please from somebody which i thought was a lovely question um and one i have to say that i've thought about often um and uh because i didn't practice very much when i was young and my mother didn't really try and make me practice either really and it, I, it took me to about 15 before i realized that practice might be worth it and then i still didn't do very much until i was 20. so i really was quite a late starter so i have to say that uh, i i think quite a lot now I think what would it have been like had I practiced earlier so but you can't just say practice more because that doesn't really work I think you have to think what do I really love and want and further on and this is one of the most difficult things to do when you're young is to picture your long-term goals as well as your short-term goals and you know we all want to chat to our friends and maybe watch something on Netflix or do, you know, there are many things or play with your dog, many things that we want to do and in the short term, but you just have to be happy yourself with trying to move between the long term and the short term. And if you think you really love music and you want to play the violin, you have to put things in your way. And we all know that it's that first two minutes of getting going with practice that's the hardest, isn't it? It's like getting into the room with your violin. So I would say always leave your violin out. I never put mine away, it's always out. So I'm much more inclined to go to it and just get going on those two minutes. And if after five or 10 minutes you think, oh, I really don't feel like it today, that's fine. Then you've done a little bit. So play every day and just get yourself in the room and then usually you can find something that you can enjoy doing you know and any bit of and try to do um conscious practice rather than just you know playing through allow some time for playing through but if you're practicing give it a, a five minute focus there you go that's an hour week this is a conversation i could go on on this topic for a long time but that's for another day I think that's a, a great. Oh, and now we, we've opened more questions. <laughs> I don't mind, Cecily. I'm happy. I promise. Okay, I, I am going to have to go let this dog out. But Brendan, go ahead. So I hope this is a quick question. Hope you can hear me like strap the fans on because my dinner's taking ages to cook. Um, but my question was, you said um, about the Brahms that when you were playing it, it felt like you were climbing Mount Everest and it was an amazing experience. Um, is there a particular experience that you look back on your career and it's like a particular standout moment that you have enjoyed or has been particularly memorable for any reason um yeah i would say playing with playing with thomas say my doing because he's makes you feel like music is the most important thing in the whole world even if you don't like the individual things that he's doing he creates an amazing experience of trust that music can transform and um, playing the Rite of Spring in the European Community Youth Orchestra, which was absolutely electrifying. It was still great, a really memorable experience. But there are, might be more, but those are the two that come straight away. <laughs> Terrific. All right, is that it? That might be it. Okay, bravo everybody. It's so great to be having some young people in the room. I so miss you all. Yeah. It feels so great.